Today it's all about the cookies and candy. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For project number one we have a Dollar Tree wood round. We're going to use this Merry and Bright sign from Dollar Tree. It's a little thin wood and then the little wood round. This also came from Dollar Tree. Any type of scrapbook paper that you like and this has candy on it so I think it's a good one and cookies. I'm going to use my glue stick, a variety of paints that coordinate with my paper, my plaster chalk paint, some sponge brushes and a regular brush. Take the tag off of your words and then I'm going to go ahead and cover that in the chalk paint, only one coat. And bright white is an option if you would like to use that. And of course, you can paint it any color you want. I like the idea of using that white though because it's gonna make the other colors pop. We're gonna take the cord out of the sign and go ahead and give this a good coating of this glue stick. If you don't wanna use a glue stick, you certainly don't have to. You can do Mod Podge, just be very um, careful with it so that you don't get a lot of bubbling and issues with your paper. So good side to side all the way around to the corners, so the edges rather. Then I'm just going to put it down with my hands and press it down and out just so it's going to stick down. Then I'll get my little tool over here and just kind of press those down. This actually came with a vinyl set. but You can use a credit card, anything you have. Even a wood ruler would work. I'm going to trim off the excess. I'm not trying to get too close because I want to sand my edges. But I'm just going to trim off anything extra. I don't want anything to get caught while I'm trying to sand and then pull the paper off. Because at this point my glue is not dry on my paper. But you can just keep going with the glue stick which is what makes it so wonderful. So you're going to take your sanding block or emery board or sandpaper and just go down and away, down and away and it's going to shear the edge off. If you've been around for a while you know this technique because I use it all the time. I'm going to take a little bit of water on a, these are just like a paper towel that I have, and I'm going to take some antiquing wax, press that into the water, get it kind of thinned out and mixed, and then I'm going to use it to go around the edges because when you sand off the paper oftentimes it's going to be like white where you sand, and if that's the look you're going for that's perfect but I always kind of like rustic, so I'm gonna use that um, antiquing wax to kind of dirty up my edges. Now I'm just gonna take a pick that I have here, this is just a wooden pick, and poke the holes out. And I'm gonna start with my paint. If you are interested in specific colors, feel free to ask and I'll let you know. But really the idea is to get some paints that are gonna match what your paper looks like. So I have two different size round sponge daubers. Dabbers, daubers, whatever. They're a foam, a foam brush on a stick. And this is the easiest way I have found to make circles. So I'm gonna start off with the larger one. I'm gonna get it in that red paint, pat it off, make sure that I can see that it is solid across the bottom. And then I'm just gonna randomly start putting these down on the words. Some will be hanging off, some will be kind of centered, however you want to do it. Now, if you don't want to use this technique, you don't have to do polka dots. You could always use stickers. If you don't have these brushes, you could do stickers or you could use a paint pen and draw some type of pattern on here or you can make circles with a paint pen if you wanted to do that. I thought the circles would be cute on here because they just kind of remind me of sprinkles like on Christmas cookies and Christmas candy. So I like the idea of using this red and the two different greens. And then once you have your red on, you can go to your next color. We're not going to use the same brushes. I'm using a smaller brush now and I'm just going to add on that dark green. It's really like a, I think it's called grass green, something like that. And I'm just going to put these on here, here and there. You can see I'm leaving this all in and I'm just trying to look all over the sign, take the whole thing in and put them on here. I'm not doing like a pattern. So I've washed out that brush, dried it really well, I just squeeze it in a towel and then I'm going to move over to this lighter pale kind of green color. 
and add those dots here and there. You don't want to put a big blob of paint, so as you can see, I'm kind of dipping in and then pressing away from it, you know, in another section, kind of pressing it out. And then once your glue is dry, when you've got your pattern on there, you can go back over it if you want to brighten your color up and add another layer right on top. And this is how it's going to look if you choose to do this technique. All right, I'm going to use a red acrylic paint pen or paint marker here. It's a fine tip. And after everything's dry, I'm going to go around my edges and just make dots. I just really want it to stand out and being white like that, it's just not standing out like I, I hope that it would. So this is going to be very busy. If you don't like this pattern and you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to. You can make little stitch marks if you want to do stitch marks or if you have a really good hand, you can trace it out. But this is how it's going to look once you get them all done. And I think that it's really, it really has a good effect, I think. I think it stands out like I hope that it would and it almost looks like little Christmas lights. I'm going to use some of this white cord this I got at the thrift store. You can use um, burlap string in any coordinating color. You could use baker's twine. That would also be good. And I'm just going to make a new hanger for it. I don't want to use the same hanger that I had. So I'm going to just, if the cording has a good sealed end, you can go ahead and feed it through there. But sometimes it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you can just add a little hot glue, protect your fingers, and then just twist it kind of into a point. And then you'll be able to push it through there. And that's what you want to do. Both sides, push it through the little hole. Sometimes it takes a minute. You just have to kind of grab for it. Then I'm going to tie double knots in both sides to keep it from slipping back. You can see it's a thick knot and it will not go through that hole. And that's the idea. We're going to do it one more time on this side. And you can just kind of pull your string up and see how far you want it, the sign to hang from the string. And I like that distance. And I will trim up right close to the knot. Not on the knot, but close to it. All right, now I have a nice secure handle. Well, hanger. All right. I just kind of measure and get an idea of where I want it to be so I know how far I want to put my sign on there, you know, how far down I want to put it, and where I want to put the little swag that we're going to make to go on the top of it. If you're new to my channel, I would like to welcome you. Thank you very much for stopping by. We do budget-friendly DIYs here, and we try to do things that are not cookie cutter. They're a little different. So what you see me doing right now is just trying to figure out where my best kind of arrangement would be, how it would look best on the sign, if I want to angle it or do it straight up and down. I do this a lot and I wanted to leave this in here for you so you see I don't just turn stuff over and glue it straight down. But I don't like the fact that it is flat on the board. I don't feel like there's enough space there. So what I'm going to do it's change it just a bit. But because I still feel like my sign is not really standing out, I'm going to take a little bit of this brown paint, which is the same brown as on that paper there. And I'm just going to go around the edges. When I paint, I generally do paint the entire sign the color that I'm painting on top. To me, it just gives it a better look. But really, in this project, I could have just left it because it should be kind of dimensional. That's kind of what I wanted with this. But you can do this either way. You can go through there and go over all your high points and all of the little corners and nooks and crannies. It'll give it a little bit of shadowing, which will kind of make it stand out a little bit. And I like the idea of that. Plus, it looks kind of like a cookie with frosting now. And so once that's done, I can just set it aside and let it dry. And you can see already it does make a bit of a difference. It really, it does. It's not a lot though. So I'm going to give it some dimension. And I did paint the back brown too. I'm going to add some hot glue and these little puppy 
sticker things. You can get something similar to these at Dollar Tree. I'm sure they work fine. But this is what I had on hand, so that's what I'm going to use here. They have sticky on both sides, and they have little pieces of wax paper on there until you get ready to use them. Then you just peel them off. I just wanted to use the hot glue to ensure that nothing came off. Now when it stands away from the sign, it looks much better. So once I got my placement, I peeled off the backings, and then I'm just gently pressing it down because this wood is thin and it will split and break if you're not careful. So you see, it's got a little dimension there. Y'all know me and my projects. I like some depth and dimension. Okay, so if you remember from a video we did recently, I had this little, I had this little um, gingerbread man left out of a pick of peppermints. And I thought he would be perfect to use in this video. The birds are talking to us outside the window, y'all. I've got the window open. It's some beautiful weather outside today, so I'm enjoying it. I am going to peel my little sticker off. These um, were donated to me, I do believe. Uh, I think so. But it looks like they came from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I didn't get them at the thrift store, though. I'm just going to cross them over in the middle. Just their stems right on top of the other. And then use this zip tie and cut off the extra to hold them together. And then we'll use hot glue to put it down. Okay, to all of my subscribers who have been here for a while, I just want to let you know that November is going to be our subscriber appreciation month. I have lots of goodies. My husband actually went to a hardware store and got a bunch of things to use and I have lots of stuff that I already have for giveaways so we're gonna have a lot of fun in November. Be sure that you subscribe and you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss your opportunities. I'm gonna have little hints in the videos coming up so be sure you're watching and listening carefully. Okay so I've raised him up a little bit with another one of those little uh, puffy sticker things and then I'm just going to use some hot glue and place them down right there over the center of the swag And this is how this little wood round farm Dollar Tree is going to look I think it's cute. It's very busy and festive and I think that is perfect for Christmas This would be so cute in a Christmas kitchen, I think But if you don't like it, hey, do it your way. Just take the inspiration The next project is a Dollar Tree peppermint so using one of these ornaments, mine actually was thrifted, but you can get these at the Dollar Tree. And a candlestick from Dollar Tree. Some red paint. Some red glitter. I'm using some clear Elmer's glue and some water. Then I have a little cup and a stick so that I can mix it up. Plus I'm going to use some tulip slick paint and then some faux snow. All right, I'm gonna take the top off of my ornament. I'm going to place the glue down in the cup, add equal parts glue and water, and I'm going to mix it up. At first, it seems like it doesn't wanna mix, but it will get thin for you and kinda of bubbly. The idea is to get this thin enough that it can be poured down into the ornament. So we're gonna pour it in there. If you preferred to use paint if you don't have red glitter or a glitter that you like you can use red paint and do this you can either tint the glue or you could water down your paint maybe and pour that in there I'm sure there are lots of videos on how to do that but for my video I'm gonna be using some red glitter that I got at the thrift store by the way I don't know if Miss Sheila watches but she thrifts with me at Goodwill and she found the glitter for me so thank you Miss Sheila all right, then I'm just going to use my hand as a funnel because I was too lazy to go upstairs and get a funnel. And I'm going to shake it around inside of this bottle. It's glitter, so it's messy, but hey. It's glitter, and it's Christmas. we got to have it. And this ends up looking like ruby red slippers. What a beautiful, beautiful color. You could use chunky glitter. You can use the ones that have the little shapes and confetti in it. There's so many options for this project. So I'm going to, you see my hand is just covered. I'm going to tap out the excess, and then I'm going to set it in front of a fan so that it will dry. If you set things around it, it'll hold it like in place. Otherwise, it'll just spin around. So what I'm doing is tapping it around to make sure that all the glue area actually has glitter on it. And then if you need extra, 
you're just gonna add a little bit extra and keep going. You can uh, use a pan and hope that most of it goes into the pan. I ended up with glitter on my chin and on my face, on my clothes, on the table, in the floor, etc., etc. And I'm gonna dump it out. Pretty much at this point, it's sticky enough on the inside of there to stay. Look at that coverage. It's beautiful. Is that not beautiful? And see now that's inside the jar, you won't have to touch it anymore once you get it sealed. I'm gonna use gloss white paint for the candlestick. I use two coats and let it dry outside. We're gonna slip the hook out of the top of the ornament, uh, whatever you call this, the top, the lid, the whatever. Hot glue and metal doesn't usually work, so I'm using some Fix All from Dollar Tree and going around here. And I am going to use this to put on the ornament. I wanna say thank you very much for those of you who have bought coffee for me. I appreciate it so much. All right, now I'm using a paint pen here, another acrylic marker, and I'm gonna start drawing this to make it look like a peppermint. So you just start in the middle and you just kind of make some little arcs or arches to go across it. I am putting little dots in where they need to be white because the first time I did this, I did not have the right amount of spaces and I ended up having two reds by each other and that wouldn't have worked. So now you can see I've marked white where it needs to be white. Then I'm gonna take my puffy paint here. Now, feel free if you don't wanna use the puffy paint to use a chalk paint or an acrylic paint. The only thing about chalk paint is it dries pretty quickly and you're going to need to have wet paint when you do part of this um, part of this piece of candy. So just, you'll see, you'll see in just a minute. That's why I use this puff paint or this, well, it's slick paint, but it's thick and it takes quite a bit of time to dry. It's easy to move around though. It's not runny at all. Um, and mine came from uh, Goodwill. I have been so blessed in getting tons of craft supplies at Goodwill. I guess people get done, they, maybe they, they craft just enough for certain projects and then they don't want it anymore so they donate the supplies. Whatever the case may be, it is working for me. So you continue around. It's gonna look a little streaky, but you can go ahead and wait till it dries and add another layer on there if you want to. But while it is wet, you need to start putting your snow on it. This came from the thrift store, but you can find something, try to find some really fine snow when you go to the, um, wherever you buy your crafting supplies or your Christmas decor. This is so fine, it's lighter than salt, but I would almost say that the grains would be about the same size as salt. So I guess that could be an option for you if you wanted, but these are white and um, it sticks so well in this paint, I guess because of the thickness of it. And I'm just gonna continue to sprinkle that all over those white spots until I get the coverage I want. Then you can take a dry brush and just kind of brush away the extra glitter or um, the extra snow rather. Brush that off of there to make it nice and clean. And you can wait until this is completely dry to do this step so you're not working around wet paint, uh, which is kind of what I was doing. But I just wanted to make sure that it would clean nicely and that you would have the idea of what to do to really make it look nice. I am very appreciative of all of you. I am appreciative of every comment, like, subscribe, share, every bit of it. I really am. And I just want to give back and I'm going to be giving back and we are going to have a ton of fun y'all. All right. So I'm going to add some hot glue in the bottom of the opening here. And I pulled these off of the back of a note of the other project because it needed a little more height. So I pulled it off and you'll see that in a little while. The last project, you'll see that. And I just put these down in here. It's just like a little foam backing thing, but you can use any type of foam, anything that you can find that will fit in there to make this level across the top. You can even use a piece of paper and glue that down if you wanted. But you see there, now it's level. Because that ornament does not fit snugly down in that hole. So it needs something to stand on. So I'm going to flood it with glue and then I'm going to sit it right on the top. Be careful with it. Do not burn yourself because that's a lot of glue. I'm going to turn it to the side, stand it up straight, and I'm just going to hold it in place for a few minutes. 
Here is some Dollar Tree ribbon. I am going to cut a piece of this and I chose this because it looks fun and it looks festive and it looks like, just reminds me of candy. Plus the red and the green look really good with these other projects, so we're just gonna go with it. This is not farmhouse, this is not traditional. This may be called contemporary, I call it fun. And hopefully inspirational. So if you don't like it, change it, make it your own. You know, that's what I always tell you guys and it's the easiest way to do it. Make it perfect for yourself. This is how it's gonna look once you get your little bow on. And this is just a decor piece you can just set on the shelf. It's really cute. Do the other side if you feel you need to. The next one is a Dollar Tree cookie box. Now this is my favorite one. This was so much fun. Taking a sign from the Dollar Tree, some paint, I got gray and silver, and a rough brush. Then I have some latte paint. I have a little hanger, I'm not sure where it came from, and then these little wood pieces. I am gonna start off by put, painting the wood pieces on the top and on the sides. I'm going all the way around there. This color reminds me sort of like gingerbread, or maybe like a, a cookie, you know? That's the feeling I get from this color, and I like the idea that it's close enough to the wood color that you can put on top of there, and it doesn't like, you know, it, it kind of looks like a cookie. I don't know what words I'm trying to use today. Words are hard, they're hard. So just like that, I'm gonna do all of the cookies like that. You don't need any on the backside. For this sign, we first need to break this glue seal that goes around. Be very careful if you're going to use the knife. Keep your fingers, thumbs, all that out of the way. You can use your heat tool or a blow dryer to put on the back of it to loosen the glue, but I found that doing it this way helps me to get a nice clean break on the back so that I don't peel everything off or break when I'm pushing down. Then I'm just taking my thumbs and pressing and holding on to the frame so that I can push it away evenly. And then I'm gonna peel off this. And this is where those little foam pieces came from. There are little nails in the back of some of these signs, so just use a little puller here, feel for the nails, and just pull them out, or staples, whichever one. I've decided we're gonna use the back of the sign as our front. After you take off your sticker, go ahead and use your gray paint first, and this is dark gray, and I'm going to color the whole thing and let it dry. Only one coat. Then I'm going to take this silver. I'm going to use my little chippy brush. And I'm gonna pat most of it off and then just dry brush across in one direction. I kinda want this to look like a cookie sheet. Not exactly, but you know, kind of like a piece of metal, kinda like a cookie sheet. All right, so I flip this over and I put it on the back of that uh, mini sign there. I have no idea where I got that sign from. I've had it forever. Once the cookies are dry, we're gonna start filling them in. So I'm using this same paint. This is called Slick Paint. I think it's by Petal. I'm gonna put some in the middle, a dollop, whatever you wanna call it, and I am going to go around in a circle on the inside. So this almost looks like a cookie, right? With icing on it? Yes. Then I'm gonna try another style. By the way, painting it on didn't work, it's way too thin. I tried it, don't recommend it. Then I'm gonna use my same brush, and that is a round tip brush. It's really easy to move this to the edge with that round tip brush, or little pointed tip. And I wanna do three different styles, and there are six cookies, so I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do two styles of each one. So one of them is half covered, one of them has a pretty good ring around it, and one of them is covered almost completely over the top. You can do this any way you want to. And if you wanted to paint your tops, you could paint them, whatever you like. So these little holly picks came from Goodwill. I'm just going to fold them over, spread out the leaves, because they're on like a, like a wire, I guess. And then I'm going to choose some peppermints from some thrifted picks that I have here. Just a bag of thrifted stuff, candy, peppermints, whatever. 
I'm going to pull that off and see it looks kind of frosted. I'm going to place that cookie. That peppermint right down on that cookie. What about that? That's cute. I think it's cute. I mean, realistically, would you have a peppermint in the middle of a cookie? Mm, probably not, but it's okay. It's imagination. It's fun. You use anything you have. You could use stickers for this. You could use confetti for this. You could use um, table scatter. You could just paint the top of your cookies with a paintbrush and paint if you, if you wanted to. But I think these look very fancy. Party cookies, hors d'oeuvres. Kind of mid-century modern with the little holly on there. Cute. These I recently got while I was out th thrifting, and there are clear and there are red, and the red are tiny. They're little bitty. But I thought these would be really cute to use as like a little star pattern on the cookie. And so that paint is still wet. That's what you see me doing, just kind of dropping it into the paint. And oops, accident. I'll put him down because now he has paint everywhere. So I've got four here, and then I'm just going to tap them down in there, and I'll add one right into the middle. So I'll have two cookies that look like that as well. Then using that same snow, I'm gonna sprinkle it on each one of our little cookies. So it has the same pretty frosty look as our peppermint candy that we made. Can you see these in Mrs. Claus's kitchen? I can totally see these in Mrs. Claus's kitchen. So tell me, what was your favorite Christmas cookie or Christmas treat when you were a child? What was your favorite? Can you remember something that you did as a family or at a party that you made together that you had every single year? Or maybe something you tried once and wish you had again. I'd love to know. All right, so you see the trim here is not the same color as the little Miss Claus sign. I'm gonna take this walnut furniture repair marker and color this entire thing. I'm gonna go all around the front edge, and then I will go to the outside and color the entire outside, and then on the inside of it too, so that everything has the same pretty color. Now it's nice and dark, it looks nice. All right, so before I glue anything down, as far as putting back my um, frame and all that, I'm going to go ahead and put my cookies and my sign in the middle how I would like for them to be displayed. This is like a, the dry run. When you just try everything out. Now I have to make sure that everything is inside enough that when I put the frame on that it doesn't hit anything. So that's why I'm kind of pushing it down and pushing it away from the corners and edge because I know that this should fit on here. But I have to test it out to be sure. And this looks like a pretty good setup to me. But my cookie sign is just a little too low down. I'm going to fix that, no worries. So everything should fit in there. And since I know that it is going to be there, I'm going to leave it in place and start putting down my cookies. It takes quite some time for these to dry, quite some time. And I can't actually tell you the exact amount of time it takes to do it because um, I would say probably 24 hours though, because they're dry now. But I was actually gluing these down while they were still wet. So that's why I'm holding them so tenderly. I didn't want to mess my paint up or drop it. I was nervous. I was so nervous, y'all. I did not want to mess this project up because I had such high hopes. Now I'm just getting the distance with my fingers, trying to see, make sure I got about the same amount of space there. And then, look at that. Judge, just look at that, look at it. But it protected it. It didn't even mess it up. Oh, the birds are happy today. I wonder if y'all can hear those birds. It's such a beautiful day. All right going on to that next corner and then I put the middle in last. That's usually the easiest way to do it if you want to make sure that you get your spacing right. 
So I'm going to put it down there in that glue also. So far so good. And then I want this to stand up taller. So what I'm going to do is peel off those foam blocks and I put those in another project. And I'm going to use these little square wood blocks from Dollar Tree and just going to put three of them on there. And then I will glue it down. See, now it sits above the rest of them. That's a step that you could skip if you don't need to do it, but I just want to give you the tip in case you run into this problem too. You don't want it to sit on the cookies. You want to give it some dimension and some lift away from it. And I'm kind of getting it centered first and then I'll press it down. I did go over that sign, the Miss Claus sign, with the same color marker as I did the frame. So just keep that in mind. Now everything matches. Mrs. Claus's Cookie Company. Is that not the cutest thing? Oh, I'm very happy with this. And I believe in you, and I believe that you can do these projects just like I can. Use your imagination and change it up where you need to. Here is our wood round. We used the sign and the round itself. They came from Dollar Tree. And then we had some thrift finds to go along with it. Here is our peppermint. Loving the colors. It looks very snowy, doesn't it? It dried so pretty. And then we're going to take a look over here at our cookie tray. There is the cookie tray. I'm so happy with this. If you wanted to, you could run some lights in there. That would be perfectly okay. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you are interested in budget-friendly DIYs. As always, I thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.